a visit to the Sesame Museum. By Liza, I mean, by Liza Alexander, illustrated by Joe Matthew. One hot summer night, everyone was sitting on the steps of One Two Three Sesame Street. Maria's cousin Donna was strumming her guitar. Look at the beautiful full moon," said Maria. Everyone looked up. I wonder what. The moon is really like said Bert. Welcome to the Sesame Street Museum. I mean, welcome to the Sesame Street Museum, and I'll show you," said Donna, who worked there. "I have a rock that came from the moon. The astronauts brought it back. A moon rock!" exclaimed Bert. "I can't wait to see that." Ernie and Grover wanted to see it too, so the three of then decided to visit the museum the next day. In the morning, Grover, Ernie, and Bert met Donna on the steps of the museum. Hi, I'm so glad you came, said Donna. It's my job to take children on tours through the museum every day. We have so many exciting things that I want to show you. I thought museums just had pictures, said Ernie. Our museum has something for everyone, said Donna. Art and science exhibits, and exhibits about how people lived a long time ago. What about the moon rock, asked Bert?、Um, asked Bert. Donna laughed. It. Don't worry, Bert. We'll see the moon rock. It's part of a The space exhibit. They all went up. I mean, they all went inside. Follow me," said Donna, and she led them up the big marble stairs. There were paintings hanging on the staircase wall. Some of them looked familiar. "Hey, that's my house," said Ernie. Right," said Donna. "A neighborhood artist painted it. Painted it. Our museum has shows of paintings by local artists." But Bert wasn't listening. He had run ahead of them. "Look! It's the moon rock!" he shouted. A huge purple crystal glittered in a glass case. Donna and the others caught up. "No," Bert said. "Donna, that's not the moon rock." That's an and and the artist aimed the mist. It's it came from deep inside our own earth, and it's part of the museum geology collection. Down the hall, Ernie stepped at an open door. What's in here? He asked. Oh, this is Doctor Burke's. I mean, oh, this is Doctor Burke's work room. Work room. This is where she and the other scientists prepare exhibits. Said Donna, inviting them, them in. Hello," said Doctor Burke. "Look, I have just about finished it, rebuilding this old pot. We found it buried it in the vacant lot on Sesame Street. The Dutch sellers used it to cook for, and I mean, used it for cooking more than three hundred years ago. I mean, three hundred years ago. Are you going to the old Sesame Street?" Exhibit. Yes, that's just where we're heading," said Dinah. Don. Dinah led them to a house that looked just the way it would have looked it looked three hundred years ago. Oh, Dinah, this is terrific," said Grover. May we go inside, please? Yes, that's what he—it's here for," she said. 
birds ran over to the butter churn and, and pretended that he was churning butter. Grover rocked a wooden cradle. Look at the cute little baby doll. Ernie tried on clothes like those the Dutch seltzers had worn. Hey birds, how do you like how do you like my hat? After they had seen everything in the old Sesame exhibit, Donna took Ernie, Bert, and Grover to the next hall. It was the ancient Egyptian room. Hey Donna, have you? Do, uh, hey Donna, do you have? Do you have any mummies? Ernie asked. Donna smiled because children always ask about the mummies. She pointed to a beautiful painted mummy case standing in the corner, and Ernie and Grover ran over to it. But Grover, I mean, but Bert had spotted something else. It was a big piece of stone. At last, he cried, the moon rock. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Bert, but that is a broken piece of monument, said Danya. See all the little pictures on this side? That's ancient Egyptian, Egyptian writing called Hari Hirali Guy Hirali Fix. When they when they left the ancient Egyptian room, Grover walked it in a strange way down the hall. Look at me, everybody, he said. I am, I am. King Tut, come on, Grover, said Bert. Stop fooling around. We're here to see the moon rock. Ernie saw a water fountain. Wait a minute, he said. I need a drink of water. How about you, Bert? Asked Ernie, squirting water at Bert. As they passed it, the prehistoric exhibit in the hall. Ernie stopped at them. Look, what are those people doing cooking right here in the middle of the museum? Asked Ernie. Donna laughed at They aren't real people. They're dummies of, the, of cave people. This exhibit shows how prehistoric people lived thousands of years ago. Oh my goodness. They had very big feet, said Grover, looking down at his own small feet standing in two huge footprints. Grover, you are standing in dinosaur traps, said Donna. Dinosaurs, do you have them here to ask Bert? Suddenly, in, interested in something besides the moon rock. Sure, said Donna, follow the tracks. Grover followed the, the dinosaur tracks into the next room, and the others followed Grover. Yikes! cried Bert. These are the biggest bones I've ever seen. That, that is the skeleton of an Apatosaurus. He was a pretty big fellow, said Dinah, but not all dinosaurs were big. Take a look of those pictures of all kinds of dinosaurs. And that is just what they did. They looked at and looked at even Bert forgot about the moon rock as he imagined it, what the earth was like millions of years ago. Next, Donna took them to the children's workshop to see the experiments. Hey, look, said Ernie, there's Big Bird. What are you doing here, Big Bird? I'm looking at one of my feathers, I mean feathers, through a microscope, Big Bird answered. It makes things look much, much bigger. Here, Grover, take a look.
Grover looked at through the microscope. Oh my goodness, that is a feather. Bird wanted to look too. I didn't know museums had things you could do, he said. Yes, Bert, answered Donna. Most museums have Saturday morning or after school programs for children. You can see some of the things kids do here at the Sesame Street Museum. Near the window, a boy was watering his plant in a tray of sprouting beans. Nearby, a girl was making a picture on a computer screen. The programs for children are different at every museum, said Donna. Donna. Some even take children to the country on field trips to dig for fossils. As they left the workshop and headed for the ocean exhibit, Dana explained how easy is it is to join the children's program just like Big Bird had. The first thing they saw in the ocean hall was a gigantic great white shark hanging from the ceiling. Wow, said Ernie, look at those teeth. Around the room were many colorful fish and plants that live in the ocean. Gee, Danya, said Bert, these fish are interesting, but aren't we ever going to see the moon rock? Okay, Bert, she answered, right now. When they entered the space exhibit, Bert did. Bert did not stop to look at the model of the solar system. He did not stop to look at the real astronaut suit. He did not even look at the huge photograph of the first astronauts walking on the moon. Bert ran straight to a glass to a glass case standing in a spotlight in the middle of the room. The moon rock, cried Bird happily. Ernie caught up with Bird. It looks just like any other rock, he said. Yes, but this rock came all the way from the moon. I think it is beautiful, sighed Bird dreamily. Oh, no, no, no. Finally, it was time to go home. On the way out, Donna took them to the museum shop, where they could buy postcards, posters, models, and books about many of the exciting things they had seen in the museum. Grover, cho Grover chose a book about an Egyptian king, and Ernie bought a tiny model of a dinosaur. Bert found a poster of the astronauts and a postcard of the moon rug to send to his cousin Bart. In the lobby, everyone said goodbye to Dania, Donna. That was terrific, said Grover. Thank you for showing us everything in the museum. Donna s smiled. Oh, there's a lot more to see. A museum's not a place you can see in just one visit. You mean we can some... I mean, you mean we can come back tomorrow, asked Bert? Yes. And as many times as you want, said Donna. And they did. The end.